This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is we're using electrical troubleshooting boards in order to teach HVAC technicians how to test electrical switches out in the field, and there's three ways that are primarily used in order to test an HVAC switch. So now we're going to get started. Here we have four common types of HVAC switching mechanisms and each requires 24 volt power in order to open and close the contacts for the switching mechanism on the other side. And so we're going to move over to a simpler layout in order to show you these testing methods with a multimeter, but these testing methods can be used on any one of these HVAC components. Here's our 120 volt fan, here we have our fan relay, and here we have our transformer which is 120 volt to 24 volt. You see that we're measuring 123.7 volts right now, so we do have power supplied to the transformer, and we have our low voltage thermostat. So anytime R and G touch in the thermostat, it's going to turn the fan on. And so that's what happens when you have your thermostat uh, face on here and you turn it to the fan mode. So anyway, what's happening here is you're supplying 24 volt power over to this part of the fan relay in order to close these normally open contacts. If you can see how the power is being applied to this fan, you see this, this common comes right back to the power source right here, but our hot wire has to go through this switch. For method one, we have the power off to this assembly right now, and we're going to turn our multimeter on and we're going to check electrical resistance across the contacts. And so now we're measuring our electrical resistance in ohms. And so we're very close to 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance because these alligator clamps are touching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect these because the power is off and we're going to go from here to here. So now our multimeter is reading OL which means open line or over limit or open limit. So you can call that whatever you'd like but basically the contacts are open and there's an air gap between them. Now we're going to turn the power back on to this assembly and this is a question I get asked a lot. How can you check the electrical resistance on a electrical component with the power on? Well what you need to know is that the electrical circuit of this, of the coil, is completely separate from the electrical circuit over here. So you're going to need to have power at the coil in order to close these normally open contacts over here. So we're going to go ahead and jump from R to G. So you see we're measuring 0 0.3, 0 0.2 ohms. And so if you measured something like, say, 1 ohm or higher right now, that would mean that the contacts inside are pitted. And that's going to create electrical resistance, and it may be due to high current crossing those contacts. This is what the inside of a fan relay looks like. And so here's your coil that you're powering, and then here's your set of contacts that are going to get sucked upwards like this. And so these contacts may be bad because they're maybe pitting. And so that would mean if you have a high electrical resistance right now, that would mean that you need to switch out this component and that will be what's stopping this from working. If you knew you had 24 volt power here and you still measured OL over here, when these contacts should be closed and you're measuring OL, that means that you need to replace this component. So you know that this is bad at this case. So that's method one, checking electrical resistance across the contacts. For method two, we're going to set our auto ranging multimeter on AC voltage. And what we're going to do is we're going to have one probe on the common. As we are following the electrical circuit to see where it's broken at, we're going to be measuring for voltage. So if we measure for voltage right here, we have 123 volts. Then you see the wires coming over here. We're going to put our, our probe right here. And we measure 123 volts again. And then we put our probe here and we see that our electrical circuit is broken because we no longer have our 120 volts. And so we, we know that that circuit is open presently. So if we go ahead and connect this here, we're measuring our 123 volts. So you can tell if the circuit is open or closed in, in the case of maybe say that fan is not running right now. If that fan was not running and we measured 120 volts right here, then we would know that the fan motor is likely bad. We could also check the electrical resistance of that fan motor with the power off in order to see if that motor is bad. This same method can be used for the low voltage side as well. And so we can measure 
28 volts right there and then bring it over here and we still have our power if we were to disconnect right here you'd see we have no power and so you know that there's a, a break basically in the power between here and here method number three is to take your multimeter set it on AC voltage and to measure for voltage across the switch and so this is probably the method that's used the least, but it's still used. So if you measure 123 volts, but you see the fan's not running right now, well, the whole point is that you have a change in the amount of voltage present between right here and right here. So you see between here and here, we have 123 volts. Let's just turn the power on. I just want you to be able to see what it looks like. Right now, we have no change in the amount of voltage read with our multimeter across those contacts. That's because we have 120 volts here, it's connected, and we have the same right here. So there is no difference. It's the same. So we have zero volts. So uh, basically what you want to do is first know that you have power present, right? So you have 123 volts. And then you can measure across each of the switches or across each of the sets of contacts and any time that you get to a point where you're measuring something like this, 123 volts, then you know that your switch is broken at that point. Primarily, we're usually using method two in order to quickly diagnose in the inside of an air handler or a furnace because we're just putting our one probe on a common. We're just hopping around testing for our voltage points and seeing where we don't have our voltage present. So you really need to make sure that when you're measuring like this, you see we have our, our power off right now, and we're measuring the same voltage right here. See? Zero volts. But that is just because we have no power over here. So you really need to make sure and be wise in how you're using this method, because you really need to check to make sure that you have, say, your 120 volts at the, the point A first before you're going and, and trying to measure from point A to point B. So I hope this video helped you understand how to test the switches with a multimeter. And if you're looking for individual troubleshooting of any one of these components, I have got videos down in the description section below, so you can check them out there. And if you're an HVAC teacher that wants to build these HVAC training boards in your classroom, I have the, the whole layout and all the components and the step-by-step -step instructions over at acservicetech.com in the article section. And we also have a bunch of other resources at acservicetech.com, such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, the quizzes. We also have our book, our thousand question workbook, quick reference cards, PowerPoints, posters. So you can check all them out at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.